Good morning. Welcome to Ron's Ramblings number 12. This is more or less a, a time out, a parenthetical aside to our regular series. In part three of our discussion of Noah, we literally went back to the very beginning. It was an attempt to show how the world that Noah lived in is different than the world that we live in today. I deem that necessary to discuss the physical attributes of the world at the beginning, uh, which involve looking into creation. I've not changed my mind. I don't intend to quit. That's still my intention. However, upon the completion of number 11 yesterday which involved a discussion of the first five verses of the Old Testament in the book of Genesis and before I'd even mentioned the length of that first day up crops the idea that perhaps that first day lasted for a million years or more actually when I considered whether or not I wanted to make a series of videos that might be viewed publicly by anyone, I suspected I would have negative feedback. In our society today, regardless of the subject matter and regardless of the evidence to the contrary, there are those who feel that they must respond vigorously to anyone who opposes their particular view. And especially is that true when it comes to religion. So I suspected that we'd have uh, those who do not agree with my views. Over the last 40 years or so, actually it might go back further than that, I've noticed that there's a large number of Christians who have bought in to the idea of evolution. No, they haven't bought into it wholeheartedly. Uh, they still want to cling to the truth, as they say, but they have bought into it in the sense that they try to, to mingle it, if you will, into what the Bible says in regard to those things that are mentioned in the creation. Evolution is an unproven theory. I don't think you'll find anyone who will dispute that. But nevertheless, it's now and has been for a number of years being taught in our classrooms as proven scientific fact. And that's simply not true. Most every, uh, there are some exceptions, but most every scientist that I know of, and I've read quite a few writings from various scientists, always say that evolution is a theory. And so those Christians who have accepted evolution yet still try to hold to the Bible account of creation are attempting to insert little parts of the theory of evolution into the scriptures. One such part is that those first six days may have been uh, millions of years long. Uh, maybe each day was a million years, or maybe each day was a billion years. It depends on, on who you talk about. But the thing is, among Christians, that, that intermingling of falsehood with truth is increasing. More and more Christians are beginning to adopt or accept uh, evolution as part of creation. And that's the scary part. Some of those are prominent Christian preachers. And, and they just don't want to hear anything that's contrary to what they're saying. Even if that evidence comes from scientists. Whether you want to believe it or not, there actually are 
an increasing number of scientists that are Bible-believing Christians, and those scientists are only trying to show the simple truth that is contained in the scriptures, but they're doing it scientifically, using scientific methods. So, in light of some of the things that I have said or referred to uh, in a few of these videos that I have uh, recorded, I, I would like to ask some questions to those who claim to be Christians and want to include a million years in Genesis 1 verse 5. And the first question is, do you question how long it took Joshua's people to march around Jericho before those walls came tumbling down? Granted, I've not gone there to visit. I don't have a personal, physical idea or view of how those walls were built. All I have is photographs of them. Some of the photographs are close-up photographs. And I think I have a pretty good idea of what those walls looked like and how thick they were. I was also in the military. And I know a little bit about marching. I've worn out the soles of two boots marching. Well, <clears throat> I wore the boots for things other than marching, but I have worn out the soles of two pairs of boots. I've marched a few miles. In basic training alone, I must have marched around the barracks area hundreds of times. And those barracks never once fell down. And you know what? Those barracks were made out of wood. And they were probably 30 or 40 years old when I got there. And I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of men have marched around those very same barracks, but they were still standing when I got there. So maybe, <clears throat> just maybe, in Joshua 6, verse 4, when God told Joshua to march around the city seven times on the seventh day, Maybe God really meant march around the city seven million times that day. Well, that's absurd, as you know. That couldn't be. Well, maybe God meant over the next million years, you march around the city seven times every day. You don't need to answer. I know you don't believe that. I also know that you believe a day is a 24-hour period of time because I know you believe on the third day our Savior Jesus rose from the grave. Just exactly the same as Jonah was three days in the belly of the great fish. Our Lord was three days in the tomb. I pretty much believe that you accept all the rest of the scriptures, pretty much everything that's written in the Bible, except that first chapter of the book of Genesis. You just can't seem to, to grasp the idea that all of that could have happened in just six days. So a second question. If the Bible is not correct in that first chapter of Genesis, why do you believe the rest of it? The same God who wrote that first chapter or through the Spirit uh, revealed that first chapter of the book of Genesis is the very same God who revealed all the rest of the Bible. Do you believe he revealed truth or do you believe that there is falsehoods mixed in there? I'm pretty sure you believe he revealed the truth. We can't just believe the parts that we want to believe or the parts that fit into our way of thinking. The Bible is not a mix of right and wrong. If any part of the Bible is wrong, then we, it can't be the authentic word of God because God can't lie. 
you can look that up. I have some good friends who are creation scientists. I've talked to several of them over the years numerous times. And I can tell you for a fact that they don't believe in the theory of evolution. And they're, in fact, working tirelessly to disprove the theory of evolution. They don't believe that evolution had any part in the creation of those things that are mentioned in Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> God didn't need help in his creation. He is all-powerful. As an, as an eternal God, he didn't need a million years to speak those things into existence. I believe God gave us those scriptures to tell us and to show us all things that lead to godliness. He wouldn't leave out any part that wouldn't help us to reach heaven, which is what he wants all of us to do. He provided the whole truth. The idea of mixing evolution with the Bible just can't possibly be true. And one of those creation friends, creation scientists, who is a friend of mine, made this statement, and I want to read it. He said, Some Christians accept parts of evolution, especially the longer than normal days, as mentioned in Genesis chapter 1. And they do that as a compromise to atheistic theories. But they're simply not the truth. The Holy Spirit did not guide compromise because the Holy Spirit revealed the truth. Thank you for watching and I apologize. We'll get back on track with the next issue. Thank you.